Welcome back, everybody. Uh, what a way to start a new week. This is Monday morning, and I get a chance to talk to Mike Benewski, who we have seen on pretty much every show that I can uh, think of and every film that I can think of over the past uh, you know, 30, 35 years. And that's the reason why Mike's uh, character was so familiar to me on Madam Secretary. Every time I would look at him, I was like, I know, I know him. He just feels like home. And it's because I've been watching him and so many things uh, prior to it. Welcome to the program and happy Monday. Oh, wow. well, thank you. Thank you, Alan. It's really nice to be here. Thanks for having me. It's, it's my pleasure. Um, you know, Madam Secretary is, is, is one of my favorite shows and I enjoyed. Uh, Mine you. too. Yeah, I, I would, I would <laughs> hope so. You seem to, uh, you seem to enjoy uh, being on it. And I really like that they, they, um, I don't know again whose idea it was, and for those who are fans of Madam Secretary, you'll know which uh, which scene we're talking about. But the scene where uh, your character is kind of sleepwalking, let's let's call it that way. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm very happy that they they let you kind of uh, do that. Was it your idea of saying, okay, guys, let's just have some fun. Let me let me do something a little different, or the writers, or what what was the uh, kind of the uh, the point there? Well, I wish I could take credit for the idea. It was not my idea. It just it popped up in the script and I loved it because, um, you know, you really humanized Gordon, um, which you had never gotten a chance to do since I'd been on the show. Plus it was funny and Gordon got to play a little comedy. Um, and so, I, yeah, I, that was great fun. And I, that it turned out great. Um, Eric Stoltz uh, directed that episode and, um, you know, he's just a ball to work with. And um, I did some research on that whole uh, overdosing on Ambien thing. And apparently it is quite common. Um, and um, it was really fun. It was really fun. I'm glad uh, I'm glad we got, we got to see the human side of Gordon because all he ever did is kind of just deliver the mail for the show. And um, that was pretty fun. Yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it. It was it was very unexpected and it was really really fun. Um, and as you know, as an actor, I thought that you would have a blast uh, doing it and just you know watching. Oh watching. God, it was great fun. It was great yeah. fun. And then watching uh, you know uh, Tim's uh, reactions, watching uh, you know uh, <laughs> his reactions, they, they were really really funny as well. Yeah. How many how many takes if you recall? How many takes was uh, was that particular uh, scene? Because you know, to me, that would have been like, okay, let's just have fun and try as many things as we can and see what works. Well, I mean, in television, you don't have the luxury of a lot of time, um, so I don't imagine we did a lot. You know, two or three usually. You know, and then by then, you you better have it, um, and then you're moving on and, and all. But we had Eric and I had spent some time talking about it beforehand and. Um, I think, you know, we had it pretty much set up before anybody started rolling and, uh, it didn't take long once you did it, but that's one of the things you learn in television is that you, you have to deliver in just a couple of three takes because you're shooting seven or eight pages a day and you yeah. got to keep moving even, even when it's fun and you, you could love to play on that scene for a while. Um, yeah. you know, we, we still got to get through the day. So was it all kind of blocked out or was there any improv of you just felt like grabbing something and uh, you went with it? Oh, uh, interesting you ask. The, there's a point where I grab an ornament off the tree. Yep. Uh, that wasn't blocked. I just did it in the moment. Um, and they loved it. Um, everything else was, we had, we had blocked it out beforehand. The, you know, the fireplace tool, the, the candles and all that. And, but the, this the moment of grabbing the ornament off the tree that just kind of happened and and it was really fun. Yeah, it just it seemed very organic and it seemed like it it would be it would be open to improvisation, which which I love on set. So uh, I really enjoyed that scene. Yeah, well, I mean that's the trick, isn't it? You know, we rehearse it and we rehearse it, and then when the camera's rolling, you make it look like it's never happened before. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a very difficult thing to accomplish. So um, mm -hmm. what's um, What's your process on how to make it feel organic and uh, unique when you're doing, you know, two or three takes of it and you talk about it before and get everything blacked out? Well, it's all it's all contingent on just being present. You know, each each take is different, each moment is different, and you're not trying to necessarily recreate something you've done before. It's just that you know you have it blocked out in your mind, and then you you just kind of kind of go with the moment listen and react and just be present 
um, and then just live each moment as it is. Uh, and, that, and you know, I think that you got to trust the other actors, you trust your preparation, and just understand that there's freedom in that. And once you sort of define the shape of whatever the scene is, then then you go, you go play. And then each time, you know, you play and you, you, you try to make each one a little different so that they don't all look like you're just trying to, um, you know, recreate or impersonate what you did in rehearsal. Yeah. Um, and that's again, that's that's where having the experience and the trust in yourself as a as an artist comes in, because uh, there was I remember specifically there was a part of me that was really kind of rigid of, you know, this is what I practice. This is what I'm going to try to do. And you're not allowing yourself the freedom to move around. And that's where the acting lives. That's where it breathes. So uh, getting out of that was was really important for me. So I'm happy that uh, you're talking about it, too. Yeah, a lot of that happens in the rehearsal part, you know, yeah. before we start rolling. And you, if, depending upon the project and the director and the setup and, of course, the other actors, you know, sometimes you'll play around and you'll see what happens. But then when it when you have to shoot it, mm -hmm. when it comes time to, to shooting it, you have to define it so all the other departments can do their job and capture it. I remember it was like that sort of, you know, I did a couple of movies with Mel Brooks back in the day and, and it surprised me. It surprised me how much they rehearsed all of the beats and all of the moments and even, you know, down to the syllables of the words to get mm -hmm. the comic timing down. And then they have to lock it in and set it because you got to shoot it. And then once you roll, it looks like it, it never happened before. And wow. so, I mean, that was just magical watching that. But you, you learn that, that, you know, there's value in that playtime and there's value in that rehearsal. But then there comes a time when you have to lock it down so you can capture it as precisely as possible for the camera. Yeah, I saw I saw the Mel uh, connection and I, I kind of I did remember it, but it was surprising that I again kind of going back uh, to even Wings, by the way. So uh, I, I don't know if, uh, if, wow. you, if you and Tim thought that, hey, you know, 30 some years later, we're, we're going to be on Madam Secretary together. Well, we did that. And then I also did an episode of The Fugitive with him um in between that um and so yeah there was that recognition of course you know he i remember it probably a little better than he does because he's done uh, hundreds of episodes of television work with lots of actors but yeah. there was that moment of what, yeah. what did we do you know and, and then it all kind of came together but uh yeah it was fun tim's a great guy tay is incredible and just think the world of them they're great people yeah, I again just it, it, in that show, and I was talking to uh, to one of your uh, you know co-stars and and uh, you know uh, actors that uh, you're working on other projects with uh, Francis Francis uh, Jew, who's wonderful, wonderful human being, and yeah, uh, yeah, he was he was also saying how how great of a set it was and how um, how cooperative and how open and how you know, Taya really took care of everybody. So it was, it was good to hear. No, it was, it was definitely one of the best sets I ever worked on, uh, just top to bottom. The mm -hmm. cast, the crew, amazing crew that were so giving and sharp. I mean, these guys knew their stuff, but boy, we had a lot of fun. Uh, but there was no wasted time. We didn't work silly overtime. Everybody was there. They were professional, but they did it in such a loving and, and cooperative uh, way that it was it was just a joy uh you know it was just a joy to work on a set like that uh i miss those guys and you know tim and taya and keith and Jelko and uh you know all the folks that we got to play around with uh and it was really it was really special and does it uh did it ever feel surreal that yeah you know, i mean you spent a lot of time in the oval office a lot of your scenes were were kind of around there did it feel surreal that okay um i'm in oval office and then there is the reality of an Oval Office and how different or similar they are. Did it ever kind of enter the mind? Oh, yeah. There were a couple of moments where you're in that room and you forget it's a set. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, especially when you're in the moment and, you know, working with those actors with that really terrific material about real, possibly real situations. I mean, you really begin to feel the magnitude of the place and the, and the, the, uh, the jobs that all of these people have. And so, yeah, there were a few moments where you kind of get lost in it, but then there were also a few moments where, uh, you know, like all of us, I'm sure 
when we're in that space, we all kind of sit back for a minute and smile and think, good God, how lucky am I, man? This is just too cool. This is great. Yeah. Uh, for for me, again, kind of as an observer, because, um, you know, I love uh, the American president and I love the West Wing. So, you know, I remember those mm -hmm. sets. They looked similar. And then I kind of look, you know, at uh, at the Madam Secretary's interpret interpretation of uh, of that space. And I, I began to wonder if any of the sets were the same. Uh, where was this? Uh, where was Madam Secretary shot? Um, the the first season was shot in a couple of different spaces in Brooklyn and New York, but uh, from the second season on, we settled at uh, Silver Cup East uh, mm -hmm. Studios, uh, where all the interiors were built there. And then there were obviously a few locations set, but but most of most of the episodes were shot on the stage on a set because it was interiors. Got it. It's just interesting. Uh, and did anybody? <clears throat> Two more questions about Madam Secretary, then we'll move on. That's okay. Uh, no, no, no. I love talking about it. Very proud of it. Yeah, you should be. Um, did anybody in the, you know, from the uh, from the world of, of politics, people who were in similar positions, did anybody reach out uh, to you and say, hey, you know, I, I, I like what you did here or I would have done it differently here? Any, any outside uh, perspectives? I don't. No, I don't. Not to me. Okay. Um, no, not that I can think of. Yeah. No. Francis said the same thing, and I thought it would be interesting because, again, you had real life, you know, secretaries of state on set. You you had, uh, mm. you know, people in uh, in politics that really uh, enjoyed the show. So mm -hmm. I know that there there was a lot of communication. Uh, I just uh, it's interesting that it never trickled down to uh, to you guys. So. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure there were some people that did hear about it, um, uh, and I'm sure some people watched it. Uh, so, but I, I, it never got to me. Got it. But uh, I know we had a, you know, a really solid fan base who really enjoyed the show, and and uh, a lot of them did reach out online and and say how much they enjoyed it, and so that was really great. For me, it was it was the type of show where it's the it's the nice alternate reality where the problems seem the same, but you actually have a resolution and you have people who want to resolve them. So it was, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's a really great outlet uh, just from the purely political uh, aspect of the show that I see problems in the real world and finally I see somebody doing something about them in the way that I would like uh, to, uh, to have it addressed. So it was, it was nice uh, to have that space. Yeah, and, and then you also get a glimpse of the humanity of these people because they're real people with with families and and health problems and issues at home and um, you know per their own personal demons they have to deal with and so uh, it, it's nice to get a glimpse behind the curtain and remember that these are real people you know they're they're real humans with lives with families with with challenges of their own outside of the public life that we all see and so I think that was good. I think that's uh, that was probably what made the show so special, and uh, you know, to me specifically, is that they were as focused on Elizabeth's political life as they were on her home life and mm -hmm. her relationship with her husband, relationship with her children. Uh, I, I I gladly admit that I'm a far better husband because of uh, Tim Daly and uh, and his portrayal of of Henry McCord on the show. I, I absolutely am convinced of that because. Uh, there you go. Husbands I'm, everywhere are better because of Tim Daly. Well, That's great. Of, of Henry McCord and Tim Daly. Or Henry McCord. There you go. So I don't yeah. know how Tim is in real life with uh, with Taya. So I hope. Oh God, Tim, Tim's a wonderful human. He, he's a great guy. Yeah. It just um, I I'm married to uh, to a powerful uh, you know successful woman uh, and we've been married for almost 21 years. So I see. Congratulations. Her. That's great. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't know how she puts up with me, but uh, I, I see her going through some of the same kind of uh, things that Elizabeth has gone through in her own, uh, you know, space and her, you know, world of corporate, uh, you know, finance. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I take readily all of the lessons that I've learned from the show uh, and seeing how Tim was supportive, and I'm trying to do the same for my wife. So I, I'm thankful to the show on many, <laughs> on many levels. There you go. That's good.
Perfect. So now, uh, kind of uh, going back to uh, to Mel Brooks, uh, who I think is uh, is a genius, and um, mm. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed his work. And uh, in my opinion, unfortunately, there's not as much of it as I want. So you mentioned briefly your experience being on set there. What was that like? Oh, that was just. I mean, imagine going to work and your job all day is to find ways to be funny. Uh, I mean. It, it just doesn't get any better than that. And these yeah. are these are people at the top of the craft. Yeah. Um, and it, it was just a joy. And, and I was pretty young at the time. I hadn't been working very much at that point. So I have, I had a lot to learn. And so I spent a lot of time watching and listening and, and sort of taking in everything that they were doing. Uh, but it was a great experience. It was, uh, you know, I, of all the stuff that I've ever done, and I've been doing working now for almost 37 years, that's the one they always ask about, wow. is baseballs. Yeah. Um, so I'm, and I'm very proud of that, uh, very proud of that. Uh, so uh, it, was, it was a wonderful experience. I think Mel is a treasure, uh, uh, and um, I, I will always relish being a, being a part of his body of work. Yeah, I, it's, uh, it, again, I came to the United States in 1989. So, uh, you know, some, some of your work I had to catch up on uh, and some of it I kind of, you know, saw as I was, uh, as I was, you know, learning English and this new, uh, new culture. But Spaceballs, it's, it's always going to be around, you know, my Schwartz. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, John Candy is there and, uh, you know, it just, the whole the whole uh, team uh, it's yeah it, it's it's one of those where again I I love the producers and uh, I love uh, you know some of other Mel's work but Spaceballs will will always be there in, in that uh, pantheon of uh, um, works that I go back to and key phrases that everybody is using probably for you know next uh, next century oh absolutely and and I think what's really been cool over the years is how it's been embraced by all of the Star Wars fanatics. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's now it's now part of their culture. They they've embraced it. They you know they have uh, uh, people who dress up as Spaceballs characters at the Star Wars conventions because it's it's all part of the same thing. In fact, there was a uh, one of those Star Wars fan magazines reached out to some of us a few years ago. I think it was on the 25th anniversary of Spaceballs. Mm -hmm. They did an article in one of the Star Wars magazines about the 25th anniversary of Spaceballs. So that's, that's pretty cool. You know, when you can say you're, you're a part of something like that, I'm very grateful for that. It's very cool. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the history of the world part one, uh, I watched it when I was still in, uh, in Russia. Um, and, you know, I didn't understand most of it because I was a kid and I was <laughs> in translation. And, I, I rewatched it many times uh, since then, but it's just yeah, that's that was my introduction to Mel Brooks. That's great. <laughs> yeah, good. It, it's good to be the king. Um, yes, it is always. And speaking of of uh, you know king and success uh, and a long career, you um, you know if I may categorize you into the uh, uh, working actor um, you know part. Always uh, happy to be here. That's fine. And I think you've been highly successful at it. Again, you know, knowing just people, you know, take a look at the IMDb and see how many uh, how many credits uh, you know uh, Mike has. But um, that type of longevity and that uh, that type of uh, success, there is a reason for it, and uh, it takes hard work, it takes understanding, and it takes uh, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of talent. So what I wanted uh, to ask you about and what I want our audience to know is when you got started, what were the steps that looking back now, you are saying, you know what, that really was the key that made this uh, thing go? Um, well, it, it, you're probably not surprised to hear it's not one thing. Uh, I think it's a, it's a collection of things. I mean, obviously the first thing it's got to start with a work ethic. You know, um, back in the day, you know, the uh, the expression was, you know, be happy to work for free and be the first one to show up and the last one to go home uh, because you want to you got to pay your dues. You got to learn the craft, try to hang around people that are doing the things that you want to do 
and even doing them better than you because that's going to make you better um, and just do the work. Um, I think also I decided early on because I got my degree in theater from UCLA, mm -hmm. but I decided once I got out of there that I was really enamored with film and, and all the possibilities of working on camera. And so I decided to specifically pursue that working on camera. So I started taking classes geared toward working on camera. And so because everything I had taken to that point was for basically acting in the theater. That foundationally acting is all the same thing, but the medium's different, and you have to know that specifically. And so I took classes geared toward working on camera. Um, and with that, um, you know, I, I I I think I just I always enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed doing the work. Um, never took it all that seriously. Um, but at the same time, you know, you take seriously the work ethic part of it, but there's so many things that are out of your control that you can't get yourself wrapped up in. Uh, yeah. And I think, you know, part of what's kept me going is that uh, I'm always looking for something new, something to keep it fresh, um, watching what other people are doing. I mean, I, that, I've been doing that all along um, and keeping up with the trends, you know, the, the fact that casting many years ago started to go online. And so, I was one of the first people, I live in Atlanta, and I was one of the first people around here to put up a website and then starting to learn uh, the skills of self-taping. Um, and, you know, I, I think I've been a pretty decent networker uh, and just continuing to try to keep keep my skills sharp and keep up with the trends. Uh, but at the same time, I, I think the core of it all is that I just I just love doing it. Um, and I and I love it all. Um, I, I don't I, I don't mind the audition process in the sense that here's a chance for me to create something different. I don't think of it anymore as trying to get a job because that's I can't control that. It's more yeah. about here's a chance to create a role, put it on its feet, give you the best of what I think I can do with it. And boy, I hope you like it because I'm proud of it and I'll show it to anybody. And you know, I, I, I like I always tell people I've I've done a lot of really good work nobody will ever see. Because in the casting process, that's just what happens. But that's okay because it's still good work. You know, I'm still proud of it. Uh, it's just that you're just not going to hit every time, and nobody does. But I, I just enjoy doing it, and and I try to keep my skills sharp. I always try to keep the fun in it, and uh, and be creative. And um, you know, I've been really fortunate. I have a good team working with me, and so all those things together, here we are. Yeah, and uh, again, Atlanta. You know, when you started, I don't think Atlanta was really a hub uh, for uh, for acting. So uh, Atlanta has been growing steadily over yeah. the past, uh, you know, ten plus years. But was there ever, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an inclination or or a desire to go to New York or go to LA? Well, I grew up in California. I, I started out in LA. I worked in LA for the first ten years of my career. Okay. But then um, I married a Southern girl. And um, it's very persuasive. And LA is not a great place to raise kids. So right after the earthquake in 94, we decided that what was best for our family was to get out. And we'd always liked Atlanta. And at the time, you know, this was 1994. Uh, it, it was a pretty decent regional market, had a lot of uh, member things called movies of the week and of course features. And they had two TV series shooting here at the time. And so I, I figured I could find a place to work, but the most important thing was our family. It wasn't a career choice. It was a life choice. And I'd, I'd figure out the way to make the career work, yeah. which is what I've done over the years. Um, so um, at the time, no. And there was a lot of up and downs because, of course, right after we moved here, then we had the Canadian tax incentives and we had a Teamster strike here. So work just really dried up for a while. Yeah. Um, but over the years, you know, again, I, uh, like a lot of actors in the Southeast, you know, you work a seven state region around here and you, you drive in your, you would drive in your car all to all areas of that place from Wilmington, North Carolina to New Orleans, to Orlando, to Nashville. And, and sometimes even as far as Dallas, if, if, if there was work and that's what we did. And now with self-taping, you don't do as much of that. Um, but you know, over the years, uh, just adapted and it's been a great place for my family. And then several of us about 15, 12, 15 years ago, got together and started working on the tax incentive proposal. And um, 
it's been going strong for a while and now Atlanta's uh, rocking and rolling. Yeah, it's it's great. I know, again, I'm in Chicago. Uh, there are a certain uh, number of actors who moved to Atlanta uh, from yeah. Chicago. So, well, things uh, are pretty good in Chicago right now. Dick Wolf has set up shop there. Yeah. You know, he took all his, except for SVU, he took it all out of New York and moved to Chicago. Yeah, and thankfully, you know, now we have uh, sound stages and we have actual studios mm -hmm. and we have our cine space. You had Empire there that was shooting and, yeah. um, you know. No, it's and probably it, most famously Ferris Bueller. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> Chicago. Chicago is a great, uh, great place, uh, and slowly but surely, uh, we we started getting some work. It's still, it's still a, a, again from my perspective, which could be inaccurate, but still, you know, to get the regulars or to get you know the big guest star roles, you still have to be in New York or or uh, L.A. Uh, Chicago gets some kind of the the co stars and the supporting, and then. You know, slowly, slowly, you can get to a recurring. Um, so there's mm -hmm. still that. And now with uh, with COVID, and now with you know quarantine time, uh, maybe Chicago is going to get a little bit more of the local work to uh, some of the bigger projects. We'll find out. Yeah. Um, is that uh, again kind of going back um, into you know you moving to Atlanta and not having as much opportunities or as many opportunities rather? Is that where your commercial work started? Because you do a ton of commercials. And actually listening to your demo, I started to recognize the commercials that I heard. I'm like, I didn't know that was Mike. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. Um, I, I did a lot of commercials in LA before I moved. Um, I did some here in Atlanta. Um, you know, Atlanta, Georgia is a right to work state. And after the commercial strike in 2000, uh, oh. a lot of our commercial work here went non-union. Um, so I, over the last several years, I haven't done as many commercials as I did back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot of voiceover here when I first got here. Yeah. Uh, but that of course, after the commercial strike has changed as well. Um, but yeah, commercials, I mean, still the most lucrative job I've ever had was a commercial. So, uh, commercials are great and I love doing them. It's, it's just over the years, you know, you got to, take it as it evolves and now I've evolved into where I do mostly guest star on television and I'm darn happy to do that. It's been really good to me. Yeah. And um, again, kind of from my vantage point of somebody who has not done it, but uh, it, <clears throat> it seems like a fun opportunity, even though you want to be a regular somewhere and kind of uh, have more consistency, but it just seems like, Hey, I get to, I get to be on a bunch of sets. I get to try on different, uh, you know, characters I get to really kind of enjoy and explore, and uh, you know, it's it's a fun fun idea, at least uh, from the outset. Is that what it really is? Um, yeah. Well, look, it's always fun. Uh, you're working. I mean, the 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 I believe we get paid for the auditions and the classes and all that stuff. And when you actually get on a set, that's the fun part. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's that's the payoff. And so you're on there, and you're you're able to do the whole. The whole deal where you're completely in that make-believe state and trying to create some magic off the page and and that's just great fun it's cool I, I really would like to be a regular someday i still that was one of my goals when i first started out was to be a regular i never have um i've come close uh i'm doing a a, a recurring gig right now on a show called high town for stars where i'm i'm close I'm close not exactly a regular but you know, it's season two and they're bringing me back again. And um, so I'm excited about that. And, uh, uh, you know, and to be on shows like Madam Secretary and The Good Wife and Into the Good Fight and shows where I've had, I have a character that's carried on for a while, not as a regular, but just keeps re keeps appearing. Um, that's all fun. I enjoy that a lot because you get to see a character go through an arc uh, through that whole time. And um, that's that's really fun. That's a, that's a real challenge, and I enjoy that. But you know, I'm still shooting for that series regular someday, and we'll see what happens. I I, I wish you luck with that. I I remember talking to George uh, Newburn uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said mm -hmm. that he kept on being recurring, recurring, recurring on Scandal, and then <clears throat> finally they made him a regular, and that was the last season. <laughs> so yeah, well, you know, it's a crazy business, right? <clears throat> Um, so does it seem like you are again, in terms of uh, f taking the COVID uh, part aside, you said that right now you're doing a lot more of the, uh, you know, guest stars. Uh, is there mm -hmm. less of the 
film work uh, coming? Because I hear from actors that, you know, film was obviously huge, but then lately, because of the streaming services, because of uh, television getting better and better, there is a lot more work in TV than on film. Have you found that to be the fact? Um, I, uh, for me, probably. I don't get as many film auditions uh, as maybe I did. I don't, I'm not um, looking at numbers and all the breakdowns every day to get really precise about it. Um, I do know this is um, a great time to be in television um, because there's really good TV out there. There's really good writers and really good actors that are doing some really quality stuff in television. And, and I think a lot of it is that idea of being able to explore a character over a longer arc and, and get into the real layers of their life and then their walk and, and you know, tell a, a really complex and deep story where, you know, in between 90 minutes and two hours in a movie, you don't necessarily get the ability to go that deep. Um, so it, it's a great time to be in television. And, and you know, I, I, um, I try not to spend too much time thinking about that because I can't control that. All I can control is what comes my way or what I hear about that I call my agent and say, hey, so-and-so is doing this. Uh, you know, we've worked together many times. Maybe there's yeah. something in it for me, you know, that kind of stuff. But because I, I am in that position where I, I got to kind of take it as it comes. And, and so far it keeps coming and, and that's all really good. And have you, again, talking about uh, having some control, have uh, you thought about utilizing your network and getting some people together and maybe creating uh, something on your own where, you know, it's going to be, you know, your, uh, your role, your, you know, you want to be a regular writer. Well, yeah, I mean, I've, I took my, my shot at writing a pilot, didn't go over very well. Uh, I did uh, last year uh, make a short film that I wrote. Uh, that's done very well uh, in festivals so far this year. Um, and i um, really proud of it. It's called Mend. Um, and uh, I wrote it and a friend of mine uh, directed it and my wife and my daughter produced it and got to work with a lot of friends that I've always wanted to work with and made a film that we're all really proud of. Um, and it's done really well out there. I, sadly, though, with COVID, all the festivals are online now. Right. So my wife and I were empty nesters now because my youngest is away at college. And so we were looking forward to this year going on the road with the movie yeah. and meeting people and networking. And because I don't work a lot in the independent film world. So one of the motive, one of the motives for making the movie was to open up some opportunities. Yeah. But of course, now that we're not able to actually go to these festivals and meet people, it's been tougher. But look. We're still really proud of the movie. It's been very well received, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I coach a lot of kids, and this is the era where I tell everybody you got to make your own stuff because it's too cheap, it's too easy, and you do like you you're doing on YouTube, and you get free worldwide distribution. Yeah. Uh, and and that, there you go. And you don't wait for the phone to ring from your agent. You can actually make a showcase for yourself, and you can you can put it out on the web. You can create you know, short videos that will become viral. And suddenly people know you, they know your work and you have an audience too, which that's another thing that becomes valuable when they're casting, in many cases, TV shows that somebody brings an audience with them. So I figured if I'm going to tell these kids to do this, I probably need to do it myself. So I finally wrote something that uh, we all agreed was worth putting on its feet and um, we're really proud of it. it. Turned out really good. Good. I, I hope you continue because, uh, again, it's, you know, you you seem like a very creative uh, uh, guy, so it would be a nice outlet, and uh, it may lead to things. So. Thanks. Yeah, I actually I wrote another one that's that's ready to go. We were going to shoot it here before the end of the year, but of course, now yeah. with COVID and plus, you know, we need to do some fundraising and crowdfunding to raise the money, and it's not a great time to do that. Uh, so we're going to wait till uh, next spring, hopefully, and uh, we'll do it again. I, I hope so. I'm wishing you luck with that. And then you, uh, you. you you made a beautiful transition into my next uh, question, which was uh, dealing with coaching. Uh, I, I know ah. about, you know, Act to Win, and I was going to be asking you if you're still, uh, you know, involved with it. Yes, uh, I, I, I am. Not as much as I was. 
uh, because thankfully the acting work's been pretty good. But yeah, I still do that and uh, I still enjoy it. It's different now because we don't meet in person. Uh, right. I really like the idea of, of sitting down with somebody face to face. Um, I guess that comes from being an actor. You know, you, you just enjoy that kind of connection. But this, you know, this connection, even as we're doing here, is getting better and better. Uh, so, you know, I still work with people and um, help them get where they want to go. Perfect. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's very rewarding as well. <clears throat> and in talking to people, you may realize some things that you should be doing <laughs> on your own. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I mean, you, yeah. I mean, they teach you as much as you try to teach them. Absolutely. Perfect. So um, at this point in your career, again, kind of putting COVID aside, uh, it sounds like you're still uh, you still have to audition. So are there you know projects that come to you and saying, hey, you know, Mike, uh, here's uh, here's a role for you to play or you still have to go through the process that the, uh, the you know, us peons have to go through as well? Uh, I don't refer to yourself as a peon. That's really yeah. not fair. Every, everybody counts. Yeah, everybody counts. Um, uh, yeah, I, I still have to audition. I, ha I have gotten a couple of offers over the years, not many. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, would I prefer to get more of those now? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> um, but um, because, you know, part of me feels like I have a, I have a pretty significant body of work and mm -hmm. it's really easy to find. And I got demos and everything on my website. So I got a feeling that if you want me, you want me. And if yeah. you don't, you don't. But um, it's part of the game. And like I said before, I, I you know, I, I enjoyed doing this. Mm -hmm. And even if it's just an audition, it's still fun. It's still working the muscle and 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 creating character and telling a story. And so, yeah, I'm, and I'll keep doing it as long as they still want me. I mean, that's the that's the key, right? Is at least they're calling. When they're when they're not calling or they're not emailing, then then you have something to worry about. Listen, you you're talented. I I enjoy your work. Uh, you have a type that's needed in many different uh, TV shows and films. So thank you. They should, they thank should continue you. calling you for for a long time to come. Let's hope. Yeah. Uh, is there a quote uh, that kind of uh, you live by and that uh, drives you? Wow. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, I mean, it's uh, it's kind of hard to pick one. There's a few, you know. Um, I mean, it, there's the one that I have on my emails that I already sent from Winston Churchill's. You know, I don't remember exactly what it is now, but um, you make a life by what you give, not by what you get. Um, and I think, you know, the nature of what we do is a very giving profession. Um, I also up here in my office, I have the Theodore Roosevelt quote about how it's not the critic who counts. It's about the guy that's got the balls to step into the fire, you know. Um, and then over there, I got uh, uh, Vince Lombardi, you know, what it takes to be number one. You got to pay the price. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, there's there's a lot of those things. Um, I, I've always valued those things. I always I continually try to take little nuggets wherever I can get them. You know, mm -hmm. like the movie we did last year, Mend. Um, a lot of the drive for that was built out of a of a Emerson quote about, you know, the purpose of life isn't it to be isn't to be happy. The purpose of life is to have purpose. <laughs> um, and because having that purpose and doing things that matter makes you happy. Yeah. Uh, you don't just be happy without that. And so, um, you know, I try to find. Um, motivation all the time in that way. And I try to keep it fresh and try to keep it moving um, because we're always evolving. That's one of the cool things about artists is that, you know, I'm not the same actor today that I was 30 plus years ago when I started. Your, yeah. your craft, your point of view on the world, everything evolves. And you got to continue to incorporate that and keep it fresh and new and original and fun and fulfilling for yourself. And and that all comes partly with life experience, and part of the life experience is taking quotes or or things from people and finding some new spark of inspiration and new things that um, keep you going and keep it fresh. And because you know that's a lot of the game here is continuing to keep yourself driven and motivated. Um, I think a lot of success is between the years, um, yeah. and so. I try to be open to that all the time. 
Um, and, you know, we're always a work in progress, I think. I mean, we're always supposed to be learning, um, trying new things, doing new things, and then trying to incorporate that things into being fresh. I mean, one of the things I enjoy now being the old guy on the set is working with these younger actors that bring a lot of new ideas and fresh energy and stuff that, that that's really cool. And it's fun to see and fun to work with. And, and it keeps it fresh for me. So um, that's a long answer to what's my favorite quote in it. No, but that that <clears throat> that gave also answers to some of the questions I was going to be asking you. So uh, it, it was. Oh, really OK. Great. All right. Uh, um, last uh, last question for you, then. Um, if you had a chance to go and talk to uh, to Mike, who is just starting out, what would be one piece of acting advice that you would offer? Oh God! <laughs> no. Um, oh man! You know, I I think that um, one of the things we have to deal with as actors all the time is a colossal amount of insecurity. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, one of the motivations for doing this is we need affirmation. We need, we need, we need to be continually reminded that we're good, we're talented, we're worthy, all that stuff, because a lot of this is, is a crapshoot and, you know, you just don't know. And there's a lot of uncertainty and of course a lot of, and so you're constantly on edge and constantly afraid that, you know, the, the, the somebody's going to pull the rug out from under you and, you're gonna you're gonna be doing a job that you don't really want to have instead of doing something that you're passionate about. So I think the one thing that I would tell my younger self is it's gonna be fine, and just believe that, you know, and just have faith that it's gonna be okay. Um, there's other jobs down the road. There, you know, there's you got to have what's called an abundance mentality that that there's plenty of opportunity for everybody. You just have to keep driving to find it. A lot of times that's the work you know, is, is finding the opportunity. But if, if I, I feel like maybe if, if I was, when I was younger, if I'd had, had that peace of mind that, you know what, it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Might've enjoyed the journey a little more. Not that I haven't. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but see here, the flip side of that, well, I understand the question and I get it. My life's pretty damn good. You know, yeah. my family, my career, I don't feel like I want to change anything because where I'm at is pretty good. And, and all of it counts, you know, it all, it all got me here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I wish I was maybe less insecure when I was younger and all that. But, you know, when I think of what I have now and how grateful I am for my family, mm -hmm. my health, my career, and the fact that I'm still doing something I love to do and I've never really had a, a job, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's all pretty good. I, I try not to think about, again, my, my whole thing is about staying present, yeah. you know, and, and really staying present in the moment. Um, and that's worked pretty well for me. And um, I think I'm going to keep doing that. Yep. I was just writing down because you, uh, <clears throat> you just gave me the name of this episode. Uh, it'll be staying present. So, Hey, there you go. Yep. Uh, Mike, it's 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 a joy, uh, you know, to talk to you. I, I really enjoyed watching you. I, I will continue doing so. And thank you so much for coming on and uh, sharing your wisdom and inspiration with us. Well, thank you, Alan, for having me. I appreciate it. It's always fun to to share. You know, I believe in uh, helping out the next batch coming through and all the stuff we can learn and pass on. This helps everybody. So thanks for doing this and thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. And thanks to everybody for tuning in into another episode of The Love of Acting. We hope you have a wonderful week and you started off staying present and continue doing so. Thank you.